three, two, one. Houston, you are clear for the fall. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 10 of this NHL 20 Custom League Franchise Mode here with the Houston Cosmonauts. I can't believe we are actually at double digits now on this series, but we do have something very exciting coming up here. But just before this episode starts, if you guys are new to the channel, enjoying my content and not subscribed yet, please go down below and consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot and we're on our way to a thousand subscribers slowly. So uh, yeah, that's my main goal here right now with this channel. But also make sure you turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And if you enjoy, make sure you go down below and leave a like. Anyways, let's jump into episode number 10. So guys, in today's episode, we have reached the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time in franchise history with the Houston Cosmonauts. Obviously, this team is in a very good spot right now. Um, Mikhail Savan was about the best signing we possibly could have made. Obviously, all five-star stats across the board is really just an absolute strength for this team. He's such a good two-way player, fits our system, and really, we aren't paying him all that much right now. $9.4 million is an absolutely spectacular price for a guy like Savan. Anyways, uh, the rest of the team's looking really good. You guys have seen this lineup before. And, uh, you know, the back end's getting led by Davidson and Larmour, Moore, who are, again, two just absolute franchise beasts. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited for this team. Obviously, you guys have also seen we do have a couple of players in this system. I showed you with our contracts here. We do have a couple of players in the system that are very exciting as well, um, such as, Lamb I believe it's Lambos and... Uh, uh, Sonnenberg, yeah, that was the other guy. Those two guys are very much uh, on their way to becoming NHL players. They are honestly not that far out, to be honest. And for where we drafted both those guys, they are looking spectacularly good as far as prospects go. So, uh, yeah, at 19 years old. I'm very excited for both those guys. They might not be in the team next year. It'll be close, but I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen there. Anyways, we are taking on the Chicago Devils. If you guys missed last episode, click in the top corner of the video right now. There will be a card there that links you to the entire playlist of this series, so you can go back and check up on any episodes you missed. Obviously, this has been a very fun series so far, and uh, we are on our way to possibly winning a cup. Unfortunately, this team stands in our way. The Chicago Devils have a high franchise winger in Igor Gonchar. Uh, just an absolute Russian beast, to be honest. Oh my god, they got him early too on the contract, so he's only 8.5 million. Same with Pedersen, he's only 9 million, and they're going to have to pay Zadina after this cup run, which is going to hurt them a little bit, but still, Chicago's looking set up for the future. They've got some really good defenders too, my god. Um... Yeah, this is going to be a tough series to say the least. Uh, this is easily the best team we've come up against here. And I'm saying that after going up against teams like San Jose and uh, Dallas. And like, it's it's been a tough road to the cup finals. Obviously, we have home ice advantage. But we're going to get into this game by game and see exactly what this series uh, holds, really, how it's going to go. So, game one. Uh, we're not just going to focus on goals. We're actually going to, uh, I guess, I guess we'll go a little bit quicker because I don't want this to be like an hour long episode, but oh, 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 my advantage proves to be a factor as one, our team's clicking and two, Timo Meyer is a beast. So he scores two goals. Barkov gets a goal and Donovan Leach also scores in the first period to give us a four nothing lead with only four extra shots in the Chicago Devils. That is absolutely insane. Second period, it's a 4-1 game. Okay, Igor Gonchar does get himself on the board there. Nets a goal on uh, Jamie Larmour there, but Kirby Dock responds, makes it a 5-1 game here to start. Pedersen responds, makes it 5-2, saying we're not going away this easy. Gallagher says, nah, we're the better team, 6-2. And then Bertuzzi backs him up, says, yeah, we're the better team, 7-2. 37 shots we are just absolutely pummeling their goalies right now and um yeah that was a very good start i mean obviously the devils and the uh cosmonauts kind of same or same similar colors uh so 
you know, there is going to be some rivalry there, even if we're not in the same conference. Who got their last goal there? I believe it was uh, uh, Brandon Montour gets a goal with a minute left there. So we win that first game 7-3. to three. First star's probably going, yeah, to Timo Meyer as he gets three points as well as two hits. Kirby Doc and Alex Barkov both getting uh, two points in that game as well. And we really just m- murder <laughs> the Devils in round one there. Or game one, sorry. And Savannah is up to 30 points now, so that is uh, that is about as good as this could go, really. So, yeah, getting into game two, I'd say we definitely have an upper hand in this series right now, but we'll see how this goes because they could very easily respond. So, first period, we're up two nothing again. Goals from Brendan Gallagher and Donovan Leach, just two minutes apart as well. That's a bit of a backbreaker for a team like Chicago, who comes out strong, shoots 11 times or gets 11 shots on net. And uh, we only get eight, but we score twice. So second period, it's still a 2 nothing game, but we responded in the shots category, got 24 shots. Now uh, the Devils only have 22, but uh, heading into the third period, this is our game to lose at this point. And really, as long as we can hold off Chicago, which we do on a power play there for a bit. So that's, oh my God, they got like six minutes of power play. They finally net a goal there. But then Jamie, or Jamie, John Davidson responds, makes it a 3-1 game. Victor Ask makes it a 4-1 game. We are crushing them right now. I don't know how, because the Chicago team is really good. So, yeah, that's going to be two solid home victories. And, I mean, I don't think there's a team stronger than the Cosmonauts in the NAHL right now. And when you have Jamie Larmour standing on his head like so... um, yeah, you're going to have a really good shot at winning every game. Savannah up to 31 points now, man. This is looking really, really good for us. Um, yeah, I got no complaints with this team at the moment. Um, but we'll see what happens here. I do want to check the player stats to see who on Chicago is really performing for them, if anybody is. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure anyone really is. So... The Devils, Gonchar's got 29 points. Okay, that's fair. And Pedersen's got 27. So those are the only two like real danger guys we have to watch. You look at our team, we've got three guys over a point a game. One of them's a defenseman. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that definitely adds a bit to the scoring when you look at the numbers like that. Uh, Miro Heiskanen's had a bit of a disappointing playoff run, to be honest. But, you know, he's still... He's still on what's probably going to be a cup-winning team here by the looks of it. And uh, really, we are just a couple minutes in, and things are looking really good here. I'm getting a little too optimistic. Maybe we still have two away games to get through here. But first period in Chicago, it's a 0-0 game. They outshoot us 12-7. Second period, it's one nothing as Mikhail Savan finds the net on Jordan Bennington there and gives the Cosmonauts another lead in this series. Andrew Copper spawns shorthanded. Oh, that's a bit of a backbreaker, and we got a 1-1 game here, and the Devils are out shooting us. So, yeah, Robert Thomas gets the goal there to give them the advantage on home ice. And, uh, see, this is what I was worried about, is that the Devils were actually going to respond, but Davidson showing, hey, we got some franchise players. We can stick with you guys no matter what series it is and what game we're in so we're gonna slow sim this again and really just see what happens here but at 2-2 it can go either way here Chicago gets a power play they got two oh my god they got two power plays there and they somehow did not score on them uh they have 48 shots and the oh let's go the cosmonauts go up three nothing Kirby Doc comes in clutch gets that OT winner there. My god. Um what a spectacular performance from the boys again here. Davidson with 3 points gets third star of the game Larmour with a 0.95 save percentage on 46 shots, only lets in two goals. My god. My god, this team is going to be good as of not just now, which they are, but as of next year too because the morale is just going to go pew right through the roof like holy jeez man this was like the best case scenario i could have hoped for oh my god davidson might win the con smythe i'm not even joking you at this point because he's got 33 points in 23 games as a defenseman as a def 
defenseman. Oh my gosh, somebody commented last game. They said, <laughs> it might have been two episodes ago, they commented Kevin Davidson's the goat. And I was like, do you mean John? And they just liked it. They're like, yeah, yeah, I meant John. Shit, man. Like when you got a defenseman playing this well, <laughs> it's pretty hard to, uh, it's pretty hard not to win, honestly. So, um, Jesus. Jesus, he is having a career year right now. 94 points in the regular season, 33 points in the playoffs. I mean, he had a point a game in the playoffs last year, but we didn't go nearly as far. That is that is absurd. John Davidson's on another level right now as a five foot nine offensive defenseman. That's why we drafted him. I was like, he's offensive, he's gonna put up crazy numbers, and that's what our team needs from the back end. So Game number four, this is it. We could win the Stanley Cup right here. First period, it's a one nothing game. Again, there has not been a single game where the Cosmonauts do not hold the lead after the first two periods. So, oh, that was a really good start. Okay, goal from Barkov there. Second period, it's 2 nothing, man. And I do want to um, highlight some gameplay for you guys, so I think I am going to jump in here. I mean, their defense is considered quite a bit better than ours, so um, that's interesting to look at, but at the same time, we only got 20 minutes left here before we sweep them. To be completely honest with you guys, I almost wanted to lose this game on away ice just because I want to win the Stanley Cup on home ice. That's like a big kind of goal here for me, but you know, any, any cup at this point is good to me, so... Oh god, oh god. This is... Okay, they really put the pressure on here, and this is going to be tough to defend. Come on. Oh, Doc had it! Oh my god. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is where we give up a goal right here. Oh god, we can't even clear the puck. Hold that arm over to your god. That was a bad start. Kind of let them see that was a good chance too. Seeing that that we kind of let them back into this game, even though we uh, we haven't given up a goal yet, but they've been in our end. They're pushing for one here, and I don't want to give one up because I know the second we do, they're gonna have life again. So Kirby Doc gets tripped again. Nice move, buddy. He was I was just trying to do backhand cut with the like step over kind. Of, I don't know what do you even call that like the the loose puck deke where you go loose puck over the stick and the guy just got his stick into our feet so uh yeah we got another power play here and can we make this one convert maybe because we didn't really use the extra man to our advantage in that last one so okay here we go timo meyer looking to make a pass and there it is that's going to be the stanley cup boys I know there's 11 minutes left still, but Brendan Gallagher pretty much seals the deal here for the Cosmonauts on the road. And who would have thought that it was going to be a sweep against probably the best team we're going up against here in the Chicago Devils? Ray Ferraro's like, yeah, this is over. <laughs> I love how he's always just standing in between the benches, but yeah, nice setup. Bennington didn't really have a chance as Gallagher had the step on his guy. And uh, yeah, we're we're through here. We're, we've won the cup, so... That is, I'm not really celebrating yet because it's hockey and anything can happen, but uh, yeah, there's not much time left. Oh man, Gonchar is good. Like he just keeps getting the puck and it's ridiculous. Oh my gosh, Mikhail Savan, you monster. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This is what 98 rated players do, man. Sorry, Daryl, but your team's just not going to get a win here in the cup finals. Oh, what a filthy goal, man. Oh, that was just nasty, man. He just turns TJ Brody inside out and snipes on top corner. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what a goal. It's the only way I can describe it is what a goal. Mikhail Savan is the best player on our team there's no question about that but it's like holy crap what a finish god this team transitions from defense to offense so quickly that it's it's ridiculous i'm trying to get that spin move you guys can see i'm trying to get that spin move to pull off because when you do it really like really throws the other team off oh that was a sexy pass from tanev 
Okay, here comes the leech. Gonna toe drag and fire. Big rebound. Impaling makes it a 5 0 game, man. Oh my god. I feel bad now. <laughs> I feel bad that we killed them that badly. <laughs> it's like home ice. <laughs> Win a tight one in overtime. Ryan Paling's just like, you know what? Nah, let's kill him. Let's kill him even more. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't pulled Bennington yet, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, he just couldn't get over to the post in time there, really. So, that's it. That is definitely it. God. They're pulling out the cup here, man. They're pulling it out. We got the animation. Hell yeah, boys. That's Houston's. That is Houston's. And a lot of these Chicago Devil fans are just like... They're like, man, we got swept, but like, fair play to the Cosmonauts for coming, coming through and winning every game in this series. Zadarov, good shot, but that was a good block too. Let's just ice that, and there we go, boys. I'm just gonna sit. I'm just gonna sit and be quiet and let you guys listen to. It's not much of a cheer, but that's it. Your Stanley Cup champions, the Houston Cosmonauts. <sighs> it was a long, long journey. It was, but, uh, you know, we were just the better team. That's the only way I can describe it. Sorry, P. I know you wanted a cup, but uh, Leach and Savan together on the top line, as well as Barkov on the second, is just too much. So, yeah. Big Sally here. I know it's on a way ice and not a lot of people are cheering, but uh, yeah, what a series. We absolutely crushed them, to be honest. So yeah, 4 nothing sweep. Kirby Doc, young legend, getting his first cup. That's insane. He's what, 19, 20 years old, maybe? I think he's 20 years old. I need to check that. Kirby Doc has just turned 20. Yeah, and there it is. I called it. John Davidson wins the Con Smythe. What a performance from the man. And uh yeah, I did not I didn't expect him to win it, but I knew it was a possibility. So, yeah, defenseman winning the Con Smythe is something else. He's on a he's on a legendary level already. So, there's the cup. Alexander Barkov going to get to lift it. I know a lot of you guys are saying, "Why is Barkov captain?" Because he was the number one player on our team for almost two years. He was that good. But, uh, yeah, he's just been a s really solid locker room presence. Been the leader. the One of the older guys on this team uh, that has a lot of skill still. And, uh, yeah, there you go. What a win. That is spectacular. Um John Davidson going to get to lift it second. Yeah, deservedly so. Use your Con Smythe guy. And uh, really, the, the franchise piece on the back end, there's no question about that. Just an absolutely spectacular playoffs. Dante Heinen, yeah, he was a really solid role player for us. Had a couple big games throughout the playoffs where he'd score multiple points. And you know who's next. It's going to be Larmour. There's no question about that. Jamie Larmour had a fantastic fantastic playoff run including he got injured for a couple of games there it was Mrazek who kind of bailed us out there in that San Jose series but uh Jamie Larmour coming back definitely made the difference and Heinen's just happy to be lifting the cup I think he would have won or he didn't win it in Boston I don't think so yeah Jamie Larmour man he's just been insane he's been so good and yeah, this team just played on a whole nother level, like it wasn't even close. So what a performance, what a win, and uh, yeah, that was a spectacular playoff run. So Jamie Lawyer Moore stops all of their shots, what was that, 29 shots? Yikes. Yeah, Lar Moore's going to be a beast next year. Um, we're going to get into the offseason now, as this episode hasn't been that long, so... Um, yeah, that's just absolutely awesome. We pass our goal to win the Stanley Cup. Multiple morale changes for winning the Cup. And we have options here. We could go to a whole bunch of different teams. 
Um, the Charlotte Gladiators actually have a really good team on their hands. We could go to the Devils. Uh, definitely not going to the Rampage. The Nashville Nighthawks are an extremely good team. So are the Philadelphia Firebirds. Man, there's a lot of good options here for teams we could possibly go to, but there's no question. The best team in the league, not just right now, but probably for the upcoming years too, is the Cosmonauts. We have been absolutely spectacular with them. We're going to sign another three years here because why not? We just won the Stanley Cup. And uh, John Davidson is your Conn Smythe winner with 34 points in 24 games as a defenseman. So yeah, man, I mean, I don't think I've seen a crazier playoff run from any team in the past. That was really on another level. The Cosmonauts are your cup champions, and the Utica Comets win the Calder Cup. Good for them. So that's Vancouver's team, right? Uh, we sell 88% of our tickets, so that's good to see. And just before we get to the draft here, or the draft lottery, I guess it's going to be, um, I want to show you guys, oh god, Donovan Leach is up to 96 overall. Anyways, I want to show you guys um, everything that's going on here. So, man, we, we almost could have had two cups there. If we had beat the Hammerheads, I think we would have gone on to win the cup last year. But, uh, yeah, cup, president's trophy, Clarence Campbell Bowl, all in one season. That's what you like to see from your team. Lutz wins the Art Ross this year. He did two years ago as well. Um, he also wins the Hart. Davidson wins the Norris for the first time in his career. Not much of a surprise there, but yeah, makes sense. Lady Bing goes to Lutz as well. Calder goes to Cole Perfetti. Okay. Uh, Davidson wins the Conn Smythe there. Uh, Carey Price wins the Vesna and the William M. Jennings, along with Thomas Grice there for the William M. Jennings. Hayden Fleury wins the Bill Masterton. Um, the Dallas Ramp or not Dallas Rampage, the San Antonio Bulls coach wins the Jack Adams. Um, Ryan O'Reilly wins the Selkie. And Ted Lindsay goes to Lutz. And the Rocket goes to Lalande after three years in a row of Brian Lutz just absolutely crushing it. So, yeah, that is uh, that's pretty crazy. Oh, my gosh. Actually, no, we had a tie. I'm like, wait, why is Lutz down the list one more time? Because Lutz tied with Lalande. You see that 2021 slash 22? They were both the top scorers in the league. Good for them. Jeez. So really, the awards couldn't look much better. I mean, I know, I wish Larmour would have won like the Vesna or something like that. Detroit lands the number one pick. Memphis moves up from 11 to 2. Austin moves up from 8 to 3. Jesus. That's crazy. Those are some crazy numbers, honestly. But, uh, you know, good for Detroit. They probably need the franchise winger here in Hartikainen. Um, That's going to definitely add to their team. I don't want to say that we're going to pursue anybody here because I really don't think we are, unfortunately. Like, I just don't see a reason to really go after any of these guys, like, like to really strongly pursue them. Like, Kong's three years out. If we could trade like Shea Weber for him, maybe that would make sense. But that's the only way I would see any of these deals going through. Uh, this Tristan Sullivan actually looks pretty decent. So maybe we could look into him. Um, as far as the rest of the potential of this draft goes, Climby, we're probably going to pick up. Um, I don't even know how many seconds we have. I would like to look into Lundberg too. Because uh, I get the feeling he's probably going to be an elite goalie. Then we got a low elite in Schroeder. Um, that's about it. Honestly, there's not many picks in here. So, as far as retiring players go, um, let's see. Corey Perry retires with 850 points. Okay, that's not a crazy number. A lot of these guys didn't have crazy numbers. A lot of guys are still playing, actually. Usually we have a couple more retirees by now, but... Doesn't look like that. Mike Smith retires. Uh, Jimmy Howard retires. Okay. And for defenseman, yeah, Ron Hainsey. So that wasn't the most spectacular retiree class ever. Lots of guys become scouts, though. That's good to see. Give them back to the community. And we're not doing interviews because I don't like wasting my time on that. So 
Let's see, they got Paling and Baikov. I don't understand why we need to put those guys on the block. Um, somehow Savan dropped off in rating, but Davidson went up, so we have three 96-rated 21-year-olds. Um, Jesus. I get the feeling that Barkov is going to, yeah, he's going to need a contract here. As he has hit high elite, he's 93 overall now. Jeez. Okay, um... I actually just want to look at the progress reports nice and quick here. Because besides Weber, a lot of these guys did grow a bit in certain ways. How did... How did Larmour go down in morale? How does that happen? Victor Rask, holy jeez. And, oh, let's go, Kirby Doc hits a medium elite. Oh, that's huge. That is huge for this team. I don't know if I even want to trade Shea Weber right now. I kind of do, because I know that he's just going to decline from here at 36 years old. But we brought him in to do the job that he got done. And uh, you can't thank him enough for that, really. So, Sonnenberg and Lambos, I am excited about, man. I am excited to see what they can do. Kapanen's up to a 70. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, I think we are going to have to trade Shea Weber. Just looking at contracts and the amount of value that we have to offer our players. We only have $6.6 .6 in cap space. We've got two huge names in Davidson and Leach expiring here, as well as Barkov. And then Rask is probably going to be too expensive to sign. So... Yeah, tough decisions coming up. I think it's going to be Gallagher and Weber are going to be the two names that we're looking to move. And we'll see what happens with that here in the draft. See what teams want to move for picks and things like that. And uh, see what we can pull here. So here we go. Um, shit, number two and three picks are available. As well as number 10 and 11. Okay. I just want to see... Let's see, two and three. Adamski doesn't really make sense to draft. We don't really need a center either. Um, I'm interested in Shannon Kong just because he's, you know, pretty pretty good for what our system is requesting. Um, I would like him. And I think he'd make a great pairing fit with Davidson eventually. But uh, I don't know if I want Tristan Sullivan or if I want this Anderson guy. Because he's NHL ready and he's a right-handed offensive. Okay, so I think I know what we want to try and trade for, but I also got to kind of line up other picks here. So if we could go with pick number three, possibly, if that's Weber. I don't know if Weber's going to be enough here. Honestly, I don't think he is. Even though he's 88 rated, I just don't see him being enough in this trade. So if we want Weber and Gallagher... Austin would have too many skaters. That's not good. Okay. Jesus, keep yelling, hey? Fuck. Okay. If we could go Weber Gallagher and a first, and then somehow get back to really trash players that they don't want. Get back, like... Abramov and like Bouchard I don't know if that would work I'd take it and they accept that okay that was not worth the value that they traded for so we have the third pick um yeah I know that a lot of the team is like why'd you trade him why'd you trade him? I I didn't really want to but we kind of needed to so yeah um and then we're gonna try for the 11th as well because I get the feeling we can pull this off as a team wants to trade it. So, Okay, so Detroit's going to make that first pick, taking 81-rated Hardikainen. That's pretty good. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're just going to let them select the second player here, Adamski, and we're going to call a couple major timeouts, try to make some deals here, and go from there. Okay, Kong's listed at 6, and I want to grab this Anderson guy as well at 13. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to try and trade back to pick number six here from the Winnipeg Wizards. If they want to get a deal done here, I'd love to do it. Um, so if we go to pick number three, which is highly valued, along with like pick number, 
If I could grab pick 65, I'd be happy with that. And maybe like a third rounder next year too. That would be good. So if we grab two thirds off the Winnipeg Wizards plus their sixth, that's rejected. Okay, what about just the 65th and the sixth? They do not want to do that, man. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Okay, fine. I'll pick number nine. I'll take number 97. If they don't take that, then really? Okay, this this is what doesn't make sense about NHL is that we literally have to trade third for sixth straight up, not get any assets back. What a joke. And watch, I bet you, watch this. With the sixth pick, I bet you we don't. You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. You gotta be fucking kidding me that Shannon Kong just went there with pick number three. Okay, I'll take it, man. That's That's fine with me. Let's see how the rest of this goes. So Edler goes there. I'm wondering how far Steen's going to fall here. Wright goes there. Oh my god. Or not Steen, it was Ledin, sorry. Sven Ledin, that's his name. He was considered the fourth best prospect in this entire draft and just drops like a rock. Oh my god. The problem is that a lot of these guys don't even fit our system at this point. I was expecting Kong to fall. And he didn't. So that's what's totally thrown me off here. And now we only have left-handed defensemen to select. Oh, Jesus. Anybody have multiple third-round picks that they're looking to move? The Stingrays. Okay. If we can get the Stingrays to make a deal here. So we go to the 74th. And the 91st. Or if somehow we could go the 60th, the 91st, and the 105th in exchange for somebody. And then also take all of these picks off our hands, because I really don't need them. So we go those three picks, and then we need to add some kind of value here. So if we go like... Uh... Oh boy... If we could go Donald to get this deal. Actually, let's try Bykov. If Bykov goes, I'll take it. And no, okay. So let's try Donald then. I think he'll have enough value to get this done. And let's go. Okay, so that's a bunch of picks that we needed. Okay, we have that 40th overall pick. And I'm going to try and figure out how I can swing it for, um, what's his name? So the 34th overall pick. Three. Okay, if, if these guys want to dealt, or deal that pick, I'll take it, because that's the exact pick I want. So if we go pick 40 alongside... See, they want goalies and stuff like that. I don't really want to offer those guys. If we go like that plus... Oh, Timoshov or Paling, I don't want to offer either of those guys. I'd rather go like... Sunfist or somebody like that and they don't come on they don't even have fucking space to land a player okay let's go with a pick then because that's all we're able to trade usually so let's go with the second the year after there that should yeah there's no way that doesn't go through as two seconds for one second so um the more i think about this pick the more i realize kind of just how screwed we are because we did not get the guy that we were looking for. So, I mean, I'll take Sven Ludden because I know he's going to be high rated, but this is just really, this is a difficult situation because I don't want to take Jackman either. I mean, I do want to take Jackman, but I'd prefer other guys over him. So maybe we try to trade down again and get value because we didn't get value the time before off of that, and it was really annoying. See, like Anderson would make a second or a great second pairing defenseman, but if I can make a trade for like even down to 10, if I can trade down to 10 with the Columbus Eagles, offer this sixth pick that I'm torn on in so many ways, use the 10th instead to land a guy that I want, and then maybe pick up like a first next year, that would be perfect. And that you can't get value back. It's fucked up. I'll trade you a second next year as well. This is such a joke of a trading system, man. It's honestly terrible. Give me a third and a fourth, then. 
What a terrible, what a terrible system. Okay, so they're going to take who? <laughs> oh, no. No, there's been so many bad picks already. Ledin would have been way better, man. Come on, you could have seen that coming. Watch an elite fall to us still almost. Bedners might have been the last one, actually. Yeah, okay. So we got Jackman. We got... I'm taking Anderson because he's NHL ready and fits the system. So why would I say no to that when he's got like A's and B's across the board and he's right-handed too? There's no question here. So we'll take Anderson. He's 76 rated. Nice pick there for number 10, and I'm happy with that. So wait, what's his name? Is it John Anderson or Josh? What's his name? Hello? Can I view my player? Jaden Anderson, sorry. But uh, yeah, really good skating on him for sure. And he's a, he's a pretty well-rounded player for an offensive defenseman, so I will take that. Okay, we're going to send him to pick 34. Hopefully that goalie doesn't go that I was just looking at. He might have actually gone even earlier because this draft's been so weird. Um, 71 rated Jackman, okay. So he didn't miss out on anything there. I mean, he's good, but he's not. 76 rated, almost ready to play in the NHL. And by the looks of it, we are going to land Lundberg here. So that's good because I get the feeling he is going to be an elite tendy. Um, George Kopitz could be good, but I'm taking Lundberg because goalies are way more reliable. And yeah, 57 rated to hybrid tendy. That's real nice. And uh, again, you don't get much better than that for potential out of the draft. So over to pick number 60 now. Okay, uh, I don't want to trade pick 60, sorry. Um, let's see. Ooh, elite goalie in Chimera was actually higher rated as a butterfly keep. Okay. Um, pretty weak second round overall but yeah Chimero was definitely a nice pick in there you don't see too many like that that are like almost 60 rated uh so we are taking i think we're going to take the risk on pedestrum here because he's a three-year eta and you know worst case scenario is he's an average defenseman so and yeah he's top six unfortunately oh God, I did not want to hit off for trade. Okay. So I'm sure we missed on some kind of potential, but we'll find that out pretty quick here. So, um, yeah, top six in Kozlov's always good to miss. Uh, Fitzgerald's pretty solid too. Um, anybody else? Let's see, what else did we miss? Because we did not make a very good pick here in the second round. Yeah, Kraus would have been better. For sure, Kraus would have been better. That's too bad, but he is 20 already, so that's not spectacular. Okay, we're going to go with uh, Climby here. I'm hoping he turns out. Elliot, it's Climby or Climby. I don't know how you say it. I'm going to say Climby, but that's just me. And he is a medium top six forward. Nice. Undersized as well. So over to pick 105 now. Uh, we're going slightly off the board again. Oh, man. There are a couple nice goalies in here, I have to say. There were. So we are going to take at 118. Yeah, we're taking Schroeder because he's guaranteed low elite, and low elite seem to grow pretty well in this game still. So yeah, 52 rated, you're like, oh, he's not that good. But he'll probably get up to about a 60 or 62 by the time we're done with him next season. Um yeah, and honestly, he's the only good pick in the fourth round by the looks of it, so no complaints there. So we got one more pick at pick 124, and I really don't know who we're selecting because this was kind of just a last resort pick in case somebody else kind of popped up on my radar, but really, there aren't that many options. Nylander almost is a good fit, but not quite. Let's take a risk. Philip Eddy, please turn out. That would be the steal of the draft if he actually does. And he is a medium top nine, so that's actually not too bad. So the next round, let's see what round five had. Anybody, oh, low elite. And Allenon didn't pick him up at all, didn't, didn't even know he was there. So Allenon's a good pick in that round. Let's sim to the next round. Okay, not just the pick. The next round, there we go. Okay, so round six. 
Um, yeah, nothing there. Jeez. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to sim the entire draft. I don't care. If there's some 7th round steals, there's some 7th round steals. Usually there aren't. So Anderson's... It's Anderson's with an S at the end. So Anderson's was good. Lundberg was good. Pedestrom was meh. Kleine was meh. Schroeder was a good pick. And Eddie honestly wasn't that bad for what I was expecting. So not a bad draft. I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah, hopefully this can kind of keep our team trending in that forward direction that we're already on so i mean we didn't give up any crazy pieces we did clear some big cap space though so that is a huge thing and that was the main reason for a lot of those trades see i didn't quite think that through in the draft when i traded with the wizards i should have thought that hey they're at pick six they're probably going to want the defenseman who's ranked at six that just that didn't go through my head so we got huge contracts to sign here. Good thing we have $44 million to sign it with. But uh, I'm really happy that Kirby Doc has hit a medium elite. That is like that is something that's just made my day here. And yeah, we got a lot of signings to do here. So the first guy I am worried about is, oh, okay. Jamie Larmour is a very nice contract there. What about Mrazek? Oh my gosh, my goalies are treating me so nice right now. What about Leach? Yeah, there's the money I was looking at. And Davidson. Oh my god, buddy. I know you just won the Norris and you're a 96 rated defenseman. But we can't offer you that much money, unfortunately. That's just so much. And Barkov wants $10 million for seven years. Holy shit. Okay. Doc is a such a nice contract, man. Such a nice contract, honestly. Okay, so we're going to offer him... We're going to try to undercut him just a little bit, go four and a half, save a little bit of money there. And then these are the big contracts that I actually need to calculate. They're saying we can get him for 9.8. I'm going to try... Mm. Okay, let's see. If I can get him for... Even 11 million. Okay, we're going to try 10 and a half first. If I could get him for 11 for the next eight years, I'll be happy. Um, Davidson's going to be insanely expensive. So let's go 14.25. They're saying we can get him for 12.1. I'm going to say we can get him for probably about 13, and that would be the lowest he'll go. But I'm going to try 12 and a half first and hope that he signs that. Because that is an absurd amount of money. And then we have Alexander Barkov here. He wants 10.3. And that's not such a bad contract. I can do 9.5 for him. And that would be totally good with me until he's 33. And those are kind of the big contracts that I was worried about. Rask is cheap. Um, I'm still going to use the rule of 85 here because we have such high expenses on this team. So if I can go 2.75 on him for the next three years, I would be over the moon with that as well. Um, oh, come on. You're, you're worth 1.1, Timoshev. You're worth a little more than that, buddy. Come on. Know your value. And, oh my gosh, I can't believe we have such, such good team and role players here. Hutton doesn't want a deal. Again, that's the second time he's done that to us in two years where he's like, yeah, I don't think I really want to sign, but I want you to sign. Man, come on. That, that sucks. We'll have to go and sign them in free agency by the looks of it. Okay, I got to offer more than one year deals here because this is honestly getting a little annoying here to have to sign the same freaking guys every single year. It, it is getting annoying. And then this... Anderson's kid is going to be pretty good, I'm thinking. So, and we'll sign Sonnenberg too, because he's definitely going to play. Um, Lambos is going to go back to the CHL, guaranteed. There's no way that he's making the NHL unless he shoots up like crazy. How many points did he put up, though? Okay, so 48 points in 66 games isn't the most spectacular. I'm hoping he really kind of takes off this next year in the CHL. Garrett Pylon. Um, 
<laughs> I love I love some of these guys' names. Oh, Abraham. Oh wait, no, that's not our Abramov. I was like, Abramov's not looking good. Well, he's not our player, so. And Othman's gonna go back to the CHL too. Um, a lot of these guys aren't even worth signing. And then we got goalies. Okay, so Larmour at 5.5 million is totally worth it. Um, and then Mrazek at the he's not even two million. That's that's so good. All right, so we get pretty much all our contracts done here. Um, hopefully they all go through. I'm praying to God that they all go through because if they do, then our budget will be safe still. Uh, but yeah, right now, it's not the most spectacular. So we get all these scouts signing. We're going to see a player name or two here on the top with the morale in a second. And let's see what happens here. So, dear God, that's a lot of scouts. So Timoshov signs, Abramov signs, Proker and signs, Kirby Doc signs for good money, Letinov signs, Larmour signs for an awesome contract, Barkov rejects, Davidson signs, let's go, he was only like 12 and a half, I think we offered him, it might have been 13, but I think it was 12 and a half, Leach signs for like 10 and a half, let's go, uh, Garrett Pylon signs, Sompy signs, Mrazic signs, Bouchard signs, Morin signs, Anderson's signs, uh, Celeric signs, Lazar signs, Rask needs more money, okay. Nygaard signs, Ikkenen signs, Sonnenberg uh, accepts, all right. Oh man, we got some good contracts from our boys here. I am extremely impressed with that. I am, I got no other way to describe it. Just thank you, boys. You guys are actually awesome. So if we can go 10 million for seven years on Barkov, $70 million contracts, pretty good deal with him still. And then Rask needed a better deal too, and honestly, he wasn't even that expensive. So if we can go three million for three years, I'll take it. Um, yeah, Hutton and Tanev. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they don't want to sign with us. Um, so yeah, Lambos, we're leaving until he expires because he'll be twenty by then, and hopefully be NHL ready. But this team's still in shape. Besides the fact that we traded away Shea Weber, I think this team is really set for what we got here and i expect barkov and rask to sign yeah okay so we're going to sim to free agency remember hut and tanev those are the two guys that we want to bring back and yeah so for the trade block i don't want to move Mrazik. i don't really want to move abramov either i'm just fine with picks and stuff like that but this team is still so freaking rock solid defensively and all around. I'm not worried. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're definitely kind of like under the limit right now for free agents. How much money do we have available? So we got 2.2 million available. Yikes. Okay, so that's not going to be so great. Um, Klingberg fits the first line or first pairing, but that's not the guy we want, I don't think. A guy like Larson might be a good fit, but I doubt it. Yeah, I don't really know who would be like the, the best fit for what we're looking for here. A lot of these guys are probably, yeah, pairing two. They're all pairing two by the looks of it. I honestly don't think we even have enough money to sign the guys I want to right now, so we might have to might have to make a move. I don't really want to. Um, but we need some pieces for this team still. Except he's 5.3 million, we'd have to clear up some kind of cap some way. So that would be the guy I'd want to bring in to play with Davidson. Um, just to keep the pairings set and good. Uh, but at 5.3 million, I don't know where we're clearing up cap from. Alright guys, so I did um, mess up and forget to hit the record button when I was going over a couple of uh, things in the off season here. So one, we went and signed Brandon Tanev to a two-year $1.3 million deal per year. Um, we also went and traded Tyler Rutuzzi, who is 4.5 million bucks a year, um, as well as Justin Barron in exchange for Colton Pareko, because I believed he was going to fit the top pairing perfectly, just like Shea Weber did, and give us that plus three chemistry boost. Looking at the lines now, after selling 97% of our tickets, it's close. 
Uh, we have 101 rated Mikel Saban. Um, and really, this lineup is still just spectacular, especially on the forward end. But when we take a look at the defense, you know, it's a little underwhelming. I mean, yes, Davidson is 97 rated. Like, he doesn't really need the boost. But it would be nice, right? So... Um, still a really solid group overall here. I'm really impressed with how it looks and I don't really have any complaints. It's just, I wish that there would be better chemistry between these guys and that's really it. So yeah, Jamie Larm, who are 87 rated elite franchise goalie. Um, and yeah, I got no complaints there, especially with how the forwards are looking, but that's how it's been the whole time. Uh, we got all plus ones here in the AHL, except on the third defensive pairing because we got two centers there for whatever reason. Um, so I think what's going to happen here is we're going to end up signing a couple of um, like two-way deals for defensemen here just to end off this episode. Looking at captains, everything's still the same here for the most part. Um, yeah, nothing really changed here besides... okay. Pareko, we can make him, yeah, he should be number 55, and Morin can be number 54, because who's the more dominant player? Who's going to be the more dominant player, really? So, uh, yeah, that's all you guys really need to see for that. Um, I mean, as far as coaching staff goes, man, I think we have about the best coach we could here in Parise. Uh, he's an A coach. He's got 67% system fit on mainly balanced... Yeah, it's a mainly balanced lineup. If we had pinch and cycle on the defensive pairings, it would be a lot stronger, to be honest. But uh, I just want to look through and see if there's any generalist coaches that are kind of like that. So, <sighs> See, man, that would probably be... <laughs> that right there would probably be the coach that we'd want to go out and get is Jackson Conroy. Um, shit, that's a really nice system fit. That is extremely nice, especially you look at our top guys, Savan, Davidson, Leach, all are almost perfect fits for where they're at. Um, Barkov as well as Meyer, Heiskanen, not so much, but we can move him around. Uh, Pareko looks really good still too, Rask, Zadarov, Paling, Nygaard, like that is... Okay, that's 74% system fit. Yes, okay. I don't know if we're going to see anything better than 74 in here. 70 is a high number for sure. And shoot, man, having, having Leach and Davidson on that kind of a boost is insane. It's actually scary, to be honest. Like having those guys on their perfect line fit would be a really nice way to run this team, but at the same time, I don't think that's how we're going to do it. Um, let's see if there's a number higher than 74. I don't think we're going to see a number higher than 74, but you never know. Yeah, there's one other 74 in here, and that's the exact same exact same system fit there with the sots, but I would rather go out, Fire our coach that we have if he's not 74% system fit. Sign Conroy because then I know the defense is going to be better. And the forwards will probably stay right around the same as they are right now. Because honestly, the system fits so damn nice. Um, so what's Parise at right now? He is at a 67. Oh, I hate to do it to him because we just won a cup. We've gone 141, 80, and 25 with him, which is an insane record over three years. That is so good, but... <sighs> All right, so I think even though it seems like a little bit of a quick, quick fire kind of move, I think we're going to do this just to get the team looking even nicer. We are going to fire Parise. I know it's a bit of a rough move from us, but... It will all make sense here pretty quickly, especially going out and getting, uh, what's his name here? What was the guy? Conroy. That was his name. Going out and getting Conroy is going to be a very large move here for our team. We're going to go one and a half million just to guarantee that he signs with us. Um, and really, it's going to be worth his time because one, he's going in and coaching literally the best team in the league at the moment. And two, he fits the team even better than our 
last coach did, and you saw how good he was, but uh, I can't believe this Goligoski guy wants six million bucks for a salary. That's insane. That's more than like half of our players make. So, um, <laughs> shit, yeah, that, that's a real nice system fit. That's exactly what we want, and I am excited. I'm excited to see how this team is going to look with Conroy as our coach. All right, so we got all our staff and everything figured out. I got my scouts assigned, so we're going to sim to the regular season just to see. Okay, uh, Conroy takes this, so let's just stop up nice and quickly here and check out our lineup now. So I'm expecting something pretty similar on the forwards. Yep, yeah. okay. No changes there. That's good to see. And then, oh, yeah, that's what I meant, guys. That's what I meant by there might be a slight difference in how the forward group looks. Jesus. <laughs> the reason that's plus five is because Pareko half fits the system and then he's defensive he's a defensive defenseman paired with an offensive defenseman, so it just plus five. Holy shit. That is the nicest. And not only that, but the bottom pairing for defense also fits really, really nice. Um See, it's only going to be plus three with Heiskanen, even though Heiskanen and Davidson together is insane. Having Heiskanen on just a plus one boost um, along with, well, what did we pay him? Only 6.2. That's pretty That's pretty sweet. But we are paying our second pairing over 10 million. Our first pairing is getting paid at around 15. Nope, never mind. It's about 18. Um, <laughs> Jesus, okay. And fortunately, Larmour and uh, Mrazek kind of saved my ass for two years here. And then after that, who knows what's going to happen. But that is the team. That is a beastly team heading into this next season. Uh, we're just going to sim to the regular season because I want to see what our team is looking like. Also, maybe look through the draft class with you guys. That's all we're going to do. We're going to look through it. But that's that's it. So, um arena is always important the promotions are not <laughs> um so yeah let's do that so yeah definitely one of the scariest parts about this entire team is that um we have just about every single one of our assets working for us in some way right now like you look i hit proposed trade here every single player that you see right now is working for us in some way lambos can make the nhl right now man he could he honestly could. Is it worth developing him now? You guys need to go and comment this below before I start next episode and next season, really. Because this dude could play in the NHL right now. He's honestly ready. Um, his skating's lacking a little bit, but he's put up eight points in six games with the Kootenai Ice this year. And honestly, I think he's ready. So... Yeah, you guys go below, comment on what you think we should do with Lambos if we bring him into the team now and start growing him, because he is our best prospect at the moment. Um, Anderson's already playing in the uh, AHL, same with Sonnenberg, same with a bunch of these guys like Kapanen as well. It's a freaking solid team in so many ways, and we still have picks here for later. I mean, nothing like crazy blow you out of the water kind of picks, and then obviously you know what our goaltending situation is, it's insane. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for this team. I'm just going to take a quick peek at the draft class here. And I was like, dear God, if we get like four more franchise players in a row here, that's going to be insane. Marvin Toms is just going to be an elite. So that's all right with me. And really the scouting reports just aren't really here yet. So yeah, that's, that's looking all right. Well, everybody dropped about two ratings. So that's why, that, why? Why does that happen, man? I, I can't stand that when the... Uh. Okay, so we're going to spend this season again trying to bump our ratings and morale back up here because that's apparently the only problem we're facing at the moment is that everybody's morale just plummets whenever it feels like it. So 101 rated uh, Anderson, 99 rated Savan, 98 rated Leach, 96 rated Barkov. Like, we got... A solid, solid group here, and I am really looking forward to next season. So anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you guys are enjoying this series so far, please go down below, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoying my content, and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Also, please go down below and comment if we should either bring Lambos up or give him another year in the CHL. 
Anyways, that's going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out and see you.